Hi, welcome to Best Stories. This is the Adventures of Packy the Rat Podcast, Season 2, Episode 6. Kindness is a language everyone understands. Tomorrow, we're going to the library, so everyone check your backpacks, instructed the children's mom. And as she had expected, some of the library books that they had taken out, the children could not find. And what started out as a normal evening quickly turned into chaos. Books and toys and papers were being tossed and searched through. And now there was only one more book to locate, and no one could remember the title of the book or what it was about. Everyone was searching, helping to locate the misplaced book. But now it was getting late, and it didn't seem like the library book was going to be found tonight. Then one of the kids shouted, I know, and ran down the stairs. And everyone quickly followed. Unfortunately, the book was not there either. And now it was definitely time to go back upstairs. And just when they were going to give up looking for their book, one of the children looked in their backpack one more time and said, Oh wait, here it is. Hmm, okay, everyone back upstairs, said their mom. Heads down, covers up, and lights out. It's time for the next adventure about Packy the Rat. It was a pretty normal day on the farm. It was springtime and the green leaves were on the trees. Every day seemed a little warmer than the day before. Packy had big plans for this day. But when Packy got up today, boy was he in for a big surprise. It startled him. Standing in the middle of the barn, munching on a hay, was a caribou. And there was Buddy just standing beside this big caribou, munching along on the hay too. Packy was so startled and curious, he crept and crawled along the barn floor until he was right next to Buddy. Psst! Buddy! Who's that you're standing next to? Wow, they're really big! I'm not sure. I woke up and it was just standing in the barn. I believe this is a caribou. I started munching on hay and it started munching hay too, said Buddy. Oh, but what I mean is, what is a caribou doing in this barn? How did it get in here? I think I should go wake up everybody and let them know, said Packy, getting a little concerned. Okay, Packy, I'll stay here and keep them company, said Buddy. So Packy went and woke up all his barn friends. Quietly, they all stood in Henry's stall, peeking out of the stall door to get a look at the caribou that was just standing in the middle of the barn munching on hay right next to Buddy. That deer is going to eat all our hay, honked Ginger. I don't think it's a deer, said Henry. I see deer all the time on my trail rides, and deer do not look like that. It's not a cow, mood, Clara. It isn't a sheep either, bleated the sheep. I think it's a caribou, said Packy. Well, I spotted a herd of those while we were flying here, said little Geoffrey. Well, there's no need to be too concerned, said Priscilla. The caribou seems friendly enough, even though it's very large and eating a lot of hay. Yes, indeed, it is a caribou, and as long as it does not get spooked or get too hungry, it will not bother us, Oliver told his friends. Why, the caribou do migrate south for the winter when it gets cold, and perhaps this caribou herd was heading back north for the summer, and it got separated from its herd and just wandered in here. Oh dear, what should we do, said Priscilla. Maybe this caribou will just leave as soon as it's had enough to eat, said Packy. Well, that could take forever, said Ginger. I agree, said Oliver. However, if the caribou is still here when the farmhands show up for the morning chores, there is no telling what they will do. The farmhands might call a zoo or an animal protection. Caribous do not live on a farm. Oh, good heavens, we need to hide this caribou. We can't let the caribou end up in a zoo, Ginger honked. We need to help him, bleated the sheep. Clara told the barn friends, There are some cows out in the field yesterday that our farm field is backed right up next to. They are from the farm down the road, Clara said. Perhaps they know something about this caribou. I could go ask them, mooed Clara. That's a great idea, said Priscilla, and let's see what we can find out. Okay, and we will try to hide the caribou from the farmhand, said Packy. Does anyone have any ideas? 
Maybe he can hide in the stall with me, said Henry. Packy tried to coax the caribou to Henry's stall with a handful of hay. Luckily, the caribou followed Packy right to Henry's stall. But it was no good. Its antlers were too big, and the caribou couldn't fit through the door in Henry's stall. Corn nuggets! Its antlers are too big to fit through your door, Henry, said Packy. Good heavens! Hurry, 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 Packy, said Ginger. We need to hide that hay-munching caribou before the farmhands see it. Hurry, they will be here any minute. Honk, 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 Ginger. Okay, okay, said Packy. Let's put the caribou in with the cows, said Packy, and we'll have it munch on hay with them. Maybe they won't notice the caribou standing with all the cows, Packy said hopefully. So again, Packy quickly coaxed the caribou with a handful of hay to where the cows were just standing around in a circle, munching on hay. While the caribou followed Packy, the caribou was way too tall and its antlers were so large, they stood straight up high above any cow and stuck out like a sore thumb. That won't work either, bleated the sheep. But then the caribou must have finally gotten tired from walking about and eating and decided to lay down right in the middle of the barn. Oliver said, Oh no, we gotta get that caribou up. He cannot just lie in the middle of the barn. The farmhands will surely see the caribou there. Packy pushed and Buddy pulled, but it was no use. The caribou was too big and too heavy to budge, and it did not want to get up. Little Jeffrey said, I have an idea. And little Jeffrey flew over to a pile of hay and got a beakful and dropped that beakful of hay right on top of the caribou. Oh, why, I get it, said Oliver. Good idea, little Jeffrey. Yeah, we can cover them with hay so they won't see the caribou, said Packy. Hurry, everyone. Quickly, the barn friends threw hay all over the caribou, so it looked like a mound of hay in the middle of the barn. Hopefully, the farmhands won't notice, said Packy. Luckily, when the farmhands came to do the morning chores, the caribou stayed lying down and was still hidden under the hay. Oh, those farmhands seem to be taking an awful long time getting chores done today, said Packy. I hope the caribou doesn't get hungry or want to get up before they leave. The farmhands finally finished up, but they were hanging around longer than usual because it turned out today they were taking Henry on a trail ride and they needed to get Henry ready to go. And just as they were getting ready to lead Henry out of the barn, the caribou started getting restless and the hay started moving and was falling off the caribou. Luckily, Henry saw the caribou start to stir and he saw the hay starting to fall off the caribou. Henry knew he had to get the farmhands out of the barn a different way so they didn't see the caribou right in the middle of the barn. Now one of the farmhands was already on Henry's back and the other farmhand was leading Henry out of the barn. Henry decided he was going to lead the farmhands out of the barn through the barn doors in the back. The farmhands didn't know what Henry was doing. They tried to pull Henry around and lead him out of the front barn doors. But Henry would not be turned around. He headed for the back barn door so fast so the farmhands wouldn't see the caribou who was right in the middle of the barn. Now the farmhands were not able to turn Henry around, but there was a good reason the farmhands did not want to go out of the back doors of the barn. Besides having a lot of farm equipment placed at the back of the barn, making it difficult to squeeze through, it was also a little dangerous with all that heavy equipment. And the rain had made the back of the barn a muddy mess. And when the farmhands and Henry finally got outside of the barn, they were a muddy mess too. Ah, oh, Henry, what's gotten into you? Why did you want to go out the back door? Now we're all muddy, the farmhand said. Henry nodded his head up and down to show he understood, and then he nuzzled his head against the farmhands. They were too fond of Henry to be mad, especially when he nuzzled them like that. And Henry was so successful getting the farmhands out of the barn they didn't even see the caribou that was now standing munching on hay in the middle of the barn again. The farmhands led Henry to the trail and just started off on the trail ride, muddiness and all. The barn animals knew they did not have a lot of time to think of another plan to hide this caribou. But luckily, Clara and Priscilla returned with some interesting news from the cows that were out in the field from that nearby farm. It seems that a pack of wolves had spooked a herd of caribou and sent them on a stampede. And this one must have gotten separated, mooed Clara. They said the herd of caribous were not far from here. And that herd of caribou will probably make it to the river by tonight to rest. Why, all we have to do is take this caribou to the river, 
said Oliver. And then the caribou will meet up with its herd, Oliver said excitedly. Well done, Clara and Priscilla. Oh, splendid. We have saved the caribou from the zoo, honked Ginger. But good heavens, how are we going to get him to the river? Ginger sighed. Now the caribou had finished all the hay that they had used to cover him and now was walking around looking for more. That's quite enough, honked Ginger. You've eaten all the hay in the barn you're going to eat. A caribou just does not belong in this barn, Ginger hung. We just have to figure out how to get him to his herd, said Packy. Well, covering him with hay worked really good, said little Jeffrey. I don't think he can walk around with a mound of hay on his back, said Packy. It will fall off. And besides, Ginger was right. This caribou has eaten almost all of the hay that is in the barn. Well, what can we disguise him in now, said Priscilla. We'll be walking along the stream all the way to the river between many trees. Well, those antlers do look more like branches than hay, said Clara. Yeah, that's it, said Priscilla. We'll disguise him like a tree. Yeah, said Packy, and we can tie branches and leaves to its antlers and walk along the stream until it reaches the river. The caribou will blend in with all the trees. There'll be lots of trees to hide in all the way to the river. But how do we get him to follow us, mooed Clara. And how do we get past everyone at the farm and make it to the stream where all the trees are safely without being seen, said Priscilla. Well, I can fly in front of him, said little Jeffrey, with some hay. Well, I'll go with you, said Packy, and I'll hold the hay out to coax him along. Well, we may as well try it, said Oliver, but I do think the tricky part is getting to the stream. There will be no trees to hide him in or disguise the caribou until we reach the stream. Clara the cow said, Why, I can help. I'll go out to the field and tell all the cows in the field to make a lot of noise. And that will get everyone looking at us while you scoot over to the stream with the caribou. And then you'll be able to hide the caribou among the trees. We can help too, bleated the sheep. We can go to the field with Clara and have all the sheep in the field make noise too. Oh, brilliant, said Oliver. We are quite a walk to the river, though, said Packy. We have to start now if we want to get this caribou to its herd before the sun goes down. So Buddy and Oliver and Clara gathered branches and leaves while Packy and Priscilla attached them to the caribou's antlers. Little Jeffrey laughed. He looks like he's wearing a treetop as a wig. Well, hopefully he will just blend into the trees once we get him to the stream as we walk to the river, said Packy. And then they led the caribou out of the barn, with Packy holding out hay for the caribou while riding on little Jeffrey. The caribou started out of the barn, but once he was out of the barn, the green leaves on some of the nearby trees were too tempting and looked better than any hay Packy was carrying. And the problem was now that the caribou was heading straight towards the cows and the sheep, and that was very close to where many farmers were working out in the field. Thankfully, it was Clara's and Lily's turn to help along with all the other sheep and cows in the field. They made a great big racket of mooing and bleeding out in that field. So much, in fact, everyone was looking at them and went to check on them to make sure that there was no problem. This plan was working perfectly. Everyone was too busy tending to the cows and sheep that were out in the field. They didn't notice that there was a caribou with leaves and branches tied to its antlers. And they didn't see Packy hanging off little Jeffrey as he tried to coax this big caribou to the stream. Priscilla was very quick thinking and told Packy to grab leaves instead of hay to coax the caribou, and that worked very well. The caribou was now headed towards the stream and soon would be hidden among the trees. In fact, they were almost to the trees when little Jeffrey honked and honked. Don't look now, guys, but I see Henry heading right this way. Oh no, we're almost to the trees, but if those farmhands spot us, it might be all over for the caribou, and then this big caribou will never make it back to its herd, said Packy. I know, said Oliver. I'll go run ahead and warn Henry. He caught up to Henry in no time to warn Henry that there was a big problem, that he was heading right towards the caribou. Henry immediately understood and reacted. He turned the farmhands back around in the opposite direction, right to those back doors of the barn. The farmhands yelled, wait, wait, no, no, and tried to turn him back to the way they were going. Oliver could hear the farmhands say, oh boy, not again. What has gotten into you today, Henry, they yelled. Henry neighed and again would not be turned around and headed the farmhands right to the back of the muddy barn once again. 
Good heavens, said Ginger. Poor Henry. I do not believe he will be getting a scoop of sweet molasses oats tonight. Thank goodness Oliver warned him, said Priscilla. And luckily, Packy and little Geoffrey had gotten the caribou all the way to the stream where they could hide among the trees. And now they were headed toward the river. The rest of the barn friends followed along just in case there were any more problems. The caribou weaved in through the trees and wandered along the winding stream. Sometimes he would reach its head up and grab a few leaves to munch on, but Packy was able to keep coaxing him along. One time the caribou got a hold of the leaves Packy was putting in front of him. It sent Packy flying off little Jeffrey. He had to let go of the leaves or the caribou was going to munch on him. The caribou stopped a few times for some water and the barn friends were concerned it was getting late and the barn friends were getting very tired. They were not exactly sure where the river and the stream met up or if the caribou's herd would even be there. Priscilla didn't want to mention this fact to her friends because what would they do if they got all the way to the river and the caribou's herd was not even there? Well, they were going to find out soon enough. All the barn friends kept following the stream, hoping that they would meet up with the river soon. Then little Jeffrey shouted, I see the river! I see the river! Oh, and I see the caribou's herd! We made it! We made it! The barn friends were so happy that the journey to help the caribou went so safe and successful. Pecky dropped down off little Jeffrey and onto the caribou's antlers and took off all the branches and leaves they had tied onto it. Pecky wondered if the caribou even knew that they had helped him, because when the caribou saw its herd, it went galloping toward them very fast and very quick. Pecky and the barn friends watched the caribou join its herd, and for what they could tell, the caribou seemed very happy. But there was no time to waste. It would be dark soon, and the barn friends needed to get back to the barn. As quick as they could, they followed the stream all the way back to the barn. Henry, Clara, and Lily and her lamb twins were eagerly waiting for their barn friend's safe return and wanted to find out what happened to the caribou. Well, they were all happy the caribou had made it to its herd. Now that big caribou would be safe and together where it belonged. Then little Jeffrey said what everyone might have been thinking. He honked. I hope the caribou knows we helped him. Packy said, I hope so too. Then Oliver said, Well, my friends, I don't think that is something we need to worry about. Kindness is a language everyone understands. And the barn friend sat quietly that night thinking about the caribou and hoping that the herd would make it to its destination. That is the end of the story about the adventures of Pecky the Rat. we go, did you know reindeer and caribou are the same animal? In North America, the animals are called caribou if they are wild and reindeer if they are domesticated. Both male and female reindeer and caribou grow antlers. The caribou migrate in herds of a couple hundred and can migrate up to a thousand miles when its food is hard to find in the winter. I'm sure glad the barn friends helped the caribou find its herd. And I wonder, what would you do if you woke up and found a caribou in your backyard? Thanks for listening to Best Stories. And don't forget to listen to our next episode in the adventures of Packy the Rat. <laughs>